So now we're almost there in terms of um, studying the optimal, you know, optimal public expenditure when you have uh, slides that may be inefficient. So the first thing we've done is that we've computed, we've obtained a formula that described uh, optimal public spending, right? So we said that optimal public expenditure Um, takes the following form. So we said that, uh, you know, once you maximize welfare, the optimal public expenditure satisfies one is equal to the marginal rate of substitution between public and private consumption uh, plus M, the unemployment multiplier, times one minus uh, minus V prime of U, where minus V prime of U is the slope of the beverage cup. So we saw that. Then we saw two things. Uh, we, we've, you know, we've looked at the two terms, so we can rewrite, you know, we can rewrite this formula as one minus the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the multiplier times one minus minus v prime of u. And then we've studied both the left hand side and right hand side of this equation, and we re-express them in terms of sufficient statistics. So first we saw that. Uh, this term here, one minus the marginal rate of substitution between uh, public and private uh, expenditure, um, that we were able to express it as one over epsilon, where epsilon is the elasticity of substitution between public and private consumption, times g over c, so that's just the ratio of public to private um, consumption, minus g over c star, that's the so Samuelson uh, you know, Samuel spending is the, the ratio between public and private consumption according to the Samuelson rule divided by uh, Samuelson spending. So we were able, we, we showed that earlier. Well, these are the two key statistics here that we have uh, here: epsilon, the elasticity of substitution between uh, G, public uh, consumption, and C, private consumption. And then this G over C star here, this is just the Samuelson level of spending. So this is the amount of public expenditure that you would have if the Samuelson rule was true. So, you know, the Samuelson rule satisfies one is equal to the marginal rate of substitution between G and C. Um, so this is, um, this is what we would have if we were in a Samuelsonian uh, world. And then we have this second expression. So M here, this is just a employment multiplier. That's you know a good sufficient statistic, something we can measure, so we'll stick with that. But then we saw that the gap here between one and the slope of uh, the beverage curve, we were able to re-express it as a function of the unemployment gap. Um, and that, that's not very surprising because actually, at the, uh, the efficient unemployment rate, one way to characterize it is that the place where the slope of the beverage curve is just one. Um, and so therefore, the gap between one and the current slope of the beverage curve actually tells you where you are on the beverage curve. If you're above that position where the slope is one or below it, and remember the beverage curve is an hyperbola, so its slope is always changing. Um, and so when you compare the slope to one, you're basically comparing the distance from the unemployment rate to the efficient unemployment rate, because at the efficient unemployment rate, the slope is just equal to one. Um, and so we showed that this uh, difference between one and the slope of the beverage curve, you can write it as two, um, and you know, and the two comes, uh, once you take the second derivative of the beverage curve times uh, u minus u star, so that's the unemployment gap over u star, the efficient unemployment. So if you want, that's like, a, it's, it's a relative unemployment gap, so the difference of the unemployment rate uh, relative to um, the efficient unemployment rate. Okay, and so we saw also that. So this allows us to obtain uh, a first formula in sufficient statistic here. Once we combine everything, So what, what we, you know, once I plug in all these things that we've just seen, so we've just seen that one over epsilon 
gc minus gc star over gc star is equal to uh, 2 times m times u minus u star over u star. And uh, here, so the goal here is to try to characterize the deviation from uh, Samuelson spending. Um, and so here we obtain a very simple expression. So at the end, what we get is that the deviation of Samuelson spending, gc minus gc star over gc star, is equal to 2 epsilon times n times the deviation of the unemployment rate of the efficient unemployment rate. So uh, this is our formula. It's quite a nice formula. It's so simple. So this is quite a beautiful formula that characterizes how at the optimum uh, public spending should deviate from uh, from Samuelson spending, you know, as a function of stuff that you can uh, that you can measure. Uh, so what do we learn from that? So then we can consider a bunch of situations depending on the value of the sufficient statistic to figure out whether you should it's optimal to spend more than what the you know the Samuelson rule. You, what you have to think about is that um, this is really like the core uh, rule governing public spending in public finance. So this is really like a core benchmark. It's a classical result uh, in a no classical model. That's how much public spending you should have. And here now we have a formula that tells us, well, if we are not in an efficient world, but if we are in, an, in, a, in a world that where productivity, you know, where we have inefficiencies, where uh, we don't have productive efficiency, but we can have, but instead we can have too much slack or too little slack. Here is how we should deviate from, the, from this core Samuelson rule. And the reason why we should deviate is that now public spending on top of just providing utility, like in the Samuelson framework, is also able to uh, affect slack, reduce slack if you, in, if you uh, increase spending or increase slack if you lower spending. And so this extra consideration, the fact that, you know, to increase welfare, we always want to bring slack to its efficient level. The fact that public spending is able to affect slack and therefore has these extra channels through which it can improve welfare, it tells us that we should uh, deviate from Samuelson. Um, and so here now we can consider all the different cases uh, from this formula. The formula tells us how uh, public expenditure, which here we measure it as a, you know, as a ratio, you know, what, what matters here is a ratio between public and private expenditure. Uh, and that's because the ratio between public and private expenditure, that's what governs the marginal rate of substitution um, between um, public and private um, consumption. But this is basically governing that ratio. It tells us how public expenditure G over C uh, should deviate from the benchmark uh, given by the Samuelson rule. Which we denoted GC star. And I think now what's it's, what is helpful is to uh, build a little table that consider all the cases. So the first thing that we want to consider is uh, the value of the unemployment multiplier. Which is M and uh, what we can consider is what happens. Uh, what happens when M is uh, negative? What happens when M is equal to zero? What happens when M is uh, positive? You know, because M is a social statistic, it captures how public spending affects unemployment through everything in the economy, um, the demand side, how uh, prices and wages respond. So, you know, anything technically could happen. We could have any sign here. It's, there's no constraint on that. And then the second thing that uh, 
second thing that we can look at, so besides the unemployment multiplier, Uh, besides the unemployment multiplier, we can also then look at different situations based on the value of the unemployment gap. Uh, so let's look here. Let's look at different unemployment gaps. Okay. And uh, so what we can consider is, of course, we can consider the case where uh, so the unemployment gap, this is just u minus u star. So we can consider the case where, um, I guess, let's see. So here we have the case m negative. So unemployment gap, we can consider the case where the unemployment gap is negative. So it means your economy is too tight. Then we can consider the case when the unemployment gap is exactly equal to zero. So that's when your economy is just efficient. And then finally, we have the case when uh, the unemployment gap u minus u star is positive, and that's when your economy is too slack. So this would be uh, a slump, and this, when it's too tight, that would be a boom. Okay. All right. So we have all these situations, and thanks to our formula, we're able we're able to see what should happen. And so one thing that's nice you notice is that if the multiplier is zero, you can see here from the formula uh, that if your multiplier is zero, the uh, right hand side is zero. So that means that you should always be at the same level, same level. Okay. So basically the idea, so here what we see is that G over C should just be equal to G over C star, irrespective of the state of the economy. That's the first benchmark. And what the reason for that is that, well, if public spending is not able to affect unemployment, means that you know unemployment, the unemployment gap would remain the same irrespective of what happens. Um, then, you know, it, it's as if really you're in a world with um, a fixed capacity, for instance, or in a world in which, uh, you know, it's basically a world in which public spending is not able to do anything about stabilization because it cannot affect unemployment or, or vacancies. And so, therefore, the trade-off that you consider is just a standard Samuelsonian trade-off. You know that if you take one worker away from private production, you take him into public production that has no effect on aggregate slack. So the only thing that you do is that you move, you know, consumption from private consumption to public consumption. In a world like this, what you want to do is that you want to keep on moving private consumption to public consumption unless, um, un, until the two marginal utilities are equal. So you're back in the Samuelsonian world here where public spending has no effect on stabilization. So if the multiplier is zero, public spending no effect on stabilization, you just, the Samuelson formula is going to hold. So that's one first case. Another very interesting case uh, you can see is if the unemployment uh, if the unemployment gap here is zero, if the unemployment gap is zero, you can see that something the right hand side of the formula is again equal to zero. And then again, uh, the Samuelson formula, formula holds. So when there is no unemployment gap, the Samuelson formula is also valid. And that's quite interesting because the Samuelson formula was derived in a neoclassical world in which product, uh, productive efficiency was satisfied. But here, what we show actually is that even in a world in which you have unemployment, in which you have slack, the Samuelson formula might be valid. And it's going to be valid when the amount of slack or the amount of unemployment is efficient. Um, so that's very interesting. It's a, it's a nice extension of the Samuelson result because Samuelson was derived in a neoclassical world. And here we show, well, actually, it also works in a world with unemployment, but as long as unemployment is efficient. So that's really quite, uh, that's quite nice and quite interesting. Um, and this type of result actually that tend to hold 
uh, more generally, so when you bring public finance formula into a world with unemployment, uh, it's going to be generally the case that this formula will be valid when the amount of unemployment is efficient. And then as soon as you depart from efficiency, which models with unemployment allow you to do, then the formulas break down. Um, I also have some work on unemployment insurance where we show exactly the same result. There's a standard a public economics formula, the Bailey Chetty formula, which was derived you know, in a world without really um, unemployment that's kind of endogenous. Um, and then you show that if you take that, it was, you know, if you want to derive like in, in a partial equilibrium setup, once you bring it into a world with unemployment, the formula remains valid as long as unemployment is efficient. And then when unemployment is inefficient, you have to correct that Bellicetti formula. Here is the same idea. Um, and so how does the correction work? Well, you can see you have now four, four situations in which you have to correct, uh, in which you have to correct the Samuelson formula. It's any time the multiplier is non-zero and the unemployment gap is non-zero, then you have to correct uh, you have to correct the Samuelson formula, um, and so I think you know a very interesting case for instance is what is when the there's too much unemployment and the multiplier is positive. Uh, so this is here in this situation, and so when we have a positive multiplier and a positive unemployment gap, going back to the formula, we can see. Uh, of course, epsilon, the elasticity of substitution, you know, that's always positive, as we argued. So M is positive, the unemployment gap is positive. Everything on the right-hand side is positive. So it means that the left-hand side has to be positive. It means you have to spend more than the Samuelson level. Okay? So positive multiplier, positive unemployment gap, public spending has to be more than the Samuelson spending. Uh, and so in a case like this, it means that you need to have a positive stimulus. You know, Samuelson spending, you can think of it as a, uh, average, well, it's some, some kind of like target level of unemployment if your world was was uh, if your world was efficient. But here it's saying, well, if the world is inefficiently slack and we have a positive multiplier, we want to spend more than that benchmark. Okay, so this means that uh, this is a case with a positive stimulus package. And uh, so the logic is that. In a world like this, you have too much unemployment. And in addition, the unemployment multiplier is positive, so that raising public spending allows you to lower the unemployment rate. Well, you have too much unemployment, raising public spending lowers unemployment, so it, it brings you closer to efficiency. So this gives an extra positive reason to do public spending. When you increase spending, you're going to lower unemployment, and therefore you're going to improve aggregate efficiency. You're going to get closer to the efficient allocation. So that, that means that public spending is more valuable than what we would have thought in a Samuelson world. As a result, you want to spend more than the Samuelson rule. That's why we have a positive stimulus. The opposite is true if you have a positive multiplier. I'm starting with the case positive multiplier because that's a more realistic case. Um, so positive multiplier, and you know, we'll discuss that at the end of the lecture. Uh, so the evidence point that the multiplier is uh, the unemployment multiplier is positive. Um, so now, if your multiplier is positive but the unemployment gap is negative, then you know going back to the formula, you can see that the right hand side becomes negative. So the left hand side has to be negative. So you want to spend less than Samuelson in a case like this. So here, public spending is less than Samuelson spending. So here, you need to have a negative stimulus. You need to cut spending. And the reason is that when you cut spending, you're going to raise unemployment. But in a situation like this, where the economy is too tight, that's a good thing. Raising unemployment means shrinking the unemployment gap and getting closer to the efficient unemployment rate. So by doing that, you know, public spending gives you an extra, you know, by cutting public spending, you get some extra welfare kicks. And so as a result, you want to deviate from Samuelson to, you know, try to, uh, benefit from these extra welfare kicks that you get by cutting public spending. Um, and so, uh, so at the Samuelson level, it's actually not optimal to stay there. What you want to do is start cutting public spending to bring the economy closer to efficiency. Um, so here you'll have a negative stimulus. And of course, then uh, following the, this logic, uh, if the multiplier is negative, everything is upside down. You know, when you have, if you have a negative multiplier, then when you have a negative unemployment gap, then you want to spend more. If you have a positive unemployment gap, you want to spend less because the idea is always that you want to use public spending to bring unemployment closer 
to uh, the efficient unemployment rate. So in the case negative multiplier, you get, you know, all the signs are inverted. So you get GC here would be more than the Samuelson level. And here GC here would be less uh, than the Samuelson level. So these are all the situations that you can get. Um, and one last thing that you can notice, and that's can, an important thing that you can see from the formula. So this is a formula that describes, I guess two things. So this is a formula that describes the optimal, uh, you know, optimal public spending. Now, is it optimal to use public spending to totally eliminate the unemployment gap? Uh, and here you can see that no, that's not the case. So let's say I, I deviate from Samuelson to eliminate the unemployment gap. And then I look at my situation. If I've eliminated the unemployment gap, U minus U star is zero. So the right hand side is zero. So if the right hand side is zero, then the left hand side must be zero. That is, we shouldn't deviate from Samuelson. Um, so therefore, it's never optimal to deviate from Samuelson to eliminate the unemployment gap because then the formula is violated in a case like this. So what that means is that in a world like this, you always want to use public spending to reduce the unemployment gap, but never eliminate it completely. And so this goes back to what we talked about earlier, that you, you cannot use fiscal policy like you use monetary policy. Monetary policy, because it doesn't create extra distortion, you can actually use it to eliminate the unemployment gap. Fiscal policy, because it does create distortion, it distorts the basket of good between public and private good, you cannot use it to eliminate the unemployment gap. You only use it to reduce the unemployment gap. And here we can see it in this formula. That's an interesting point. So it's never optimal to deviate from Samuelson enough so as to eliminate the unemployment gap. It's only optimal to reduce the unemployment gap. So the U minus U star. Okay, uh, that's a key thing. Another thing that's important to notice here is that this formula that we have, you can see that it, um, you know, this doesn't give us, that's very important. So it's a solution statistic formula. It describes the optimal policy. But you can see that it doesn't give us what the, the, the quantitative value of stimulus spending, because uh, you see, like, so let's say you're at Samuelson and your economy is inefficient, you're in a recession, you want to decide how much to change public spending, you know. Well, the thing is that you cannot use that formula here because let's say you have a positive unemployment gap, you plug in your unemployment gap in the formula, you look at the stimulus spending that's given by the left hand side and you implement that public spending. The thing is that when you do that, by increasing public spending, say, you're going to, the unemployment gap is going to respond. So as you do that, as you change the left hand side, the right hand side is going to respond. And so, you know, the initial left hand side that was optimal with the initial unemployment gap is not going to be optimal once you've implemented it and you reach a new unemployment gap. So what I'm saying here is that this, you know, the key thing is that the U that you have here, this depends on G over C on public spending. So, uh, this, this formula, this is an implicit formula in that it only implicitly defines. So, you know, we, it, we can use it qualitatively to, to figure out what are the deviations from Samuelson and so on. But otherwise, it only implicitly defines uh, stimulus spending and optimal uh, stimulus spending. And so, so, therefore, we have to rewrite the formula to be able to describe stimulus spending explicitly and therefore be able to quantify stimulus spending. So that's what I want to do now, is to transform this implicit formula in which U depends on GC to make it explicit and be able to say, oh, actually, if I see an unemployment gap of, you know, four percentage points, here is how much I should spend, which is what really policymakers want. So let's now build this explicit formula.